My name is Christina Spricka. I'm the director of the Pediatric Headache Program at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. I got into this field because I knew I wanted to be a child neurologist. Um, some early life experiences had made that path clear to me, that I, I wanted to take care of children with intellectual disabilities and things like that. But then when I was in college, I woke up one day and I had severe pain and I could barely get out of bed and I went through months like that um, and ultimately recovered and, and became much more functional um, but decided at that point that I wanted to take care of, of children with chronic pain. Initially I thought I would do more general chronic pain but then uh, when I was a resident it became clear to me that we didn't do a very good job of taking care of kids with headache. If you look back 50 years ago or so all we knew really was that children had headaches. Over the years we've learned more and more about these children um, and we've learned that migraine is, is very common in children, um, that migraine occurs in about single digit percentages of school age kids and becomes much more common through adolescence. I think there's a lot of stigma around migraine. There's a lot of trouble where you know a child can have an individual episode and some, everyone will say, oh, I have migraines, I know what that means. But the problem is within an episode, the child can have profound pain, can have nausea. They, don't, they want to lay in a dark room, and yet we're asking them to go through a school day. We're asking them to function. And we do. We ask them to do those things because over time we feel that it's more helpful, but it's absolutely very difficult for that child to get through the day sometimes. We spend a lot of time talking to parents saying, you know, it's, it's really difficult to watch this. What we need you to do is help us to empower your child to try to get through as we try to work on treatments to make their pain less of a problem, but to essentially help them to function through so that their life isn't taken over. In thinking about how migraine symptoms vary between younger children and adults, we see differences. So there are children who would have a more classic migraine presentation, very similar to what you think of as an adult presentation, where pain is a predominant symptom. But in younger children, we also see some differences. So we see more common GI symptoms, so vomiting and belly pain, um, are often very common, sort of the hallmarks of the headaches or the, or the migraine uh, symptoms in young children. But we also see things like a difference in the duration of the headaches. So migraines in younger children are sometimes much shorter. Sometimes they're so short that we can't even really treat them with a medication because literally the child will develop severe pain and belly pain or nausea, vomit, and then the episode's over. And so it's almost so quick that it's hard to treat. Migraine is actually very common, that it's a significant problem. It's important to acknowledge it. It's important to acknowledge that the child's not making up their pain, they're not lying, they're not trying to get out of something, that they're having significant pain. So starting with that conversation is often helpful. It's amazing how many parents will report that they have migraine and that looking back they had migraine as a young child, but they were never diagnosed because they were told, oh, you can't possibly have migraines, you're too young. And so just making that diagnosis and acknowledging the problem is a very helpful start. Maybe provoked by something or maybe out of the blue, the child will report sort of an onset of pain, which will last for several hours and then get better over time. When the pain is present, there's often associated symptoms of sensitivity to light, sensitivity to sound, nausea, sometimes vomiting and the child will feel uncomfortable doing things. So even something as simple as walking up the stairs or going through a day at school can make them feel worse. Certainly there are children who have what we call chronic migraine, where essentially they have headache more, more days than not. Um, the rates are probably around one and a half to two percent, depending on exactly how you define that. But so that's not a common condition, but if you think about that, two out of every 100 children means that lots of, of teenagers out there who have very frequent headaches. So the presence of frequent headaches, if they are migrainous and sort of happening over time, that in and of itself could be migraine. If you have a child in front of you and you've ruled out the secondary causes and you don't think there's anything more serious going on, then it's important to, to then recognize migraine for what it is. So a child who presents to you with recurrent episodes of pain, where there's associated sensitivity to light or sound, nausea, vomiting, worsening with activity, that child probably has migraine. And it's very important to put a name to that and to recognize it, and to then move on to ideas of treatment. So if you have a child who's having frequent episodes, then it's particularly important in that child to go over different elements of what we call the healthy habits. So things like sleep consistency, hydration, consistency of eating, um, making sure that they follow just a very regular schedule. There are 
a number of different studies which have suggested that treating those children with a host of different medications, um, supplements, can be very helpful. So what I often tell general pediatricians is do something like start them on some riboflavin or some magnesium, something that's relatively benign that most parents are very willing to try um, and has a low rate of side effects. Um, and so you could try them on a supplement if they're having frequent headaches along with your counseling to see if that it can help to reduce the frequency of headaches. Then the last piece is what to do acutely. So the vast majority of um, children with migraine are going to have low, lower frequency of headaches and so many of them aren't even going to require preventive treatment but they probably will require something in the moment. So if you have an episode that's lasting four hours and causing them to miss a half a day of school, even once a month, that's too much time. Um, and so you can give that child either a strong dose of an anti-inflammatory or even a triptan medication to treat the headaches. Without question, cognitive behavioral therapy, which includes biofeedback, is, has very strong evidence of benefit. So what do I mean by that? So cognitive behavioral therapy is a technique that psychologists use to help reframe. So I think if I explained it to patients that in the middle of a migraine you feel awful and say you have headache 15 days a month so you have so many headaches that I'm telling you I'm sorry you really need to go to school through that headache so cognitive behavioral therapy will help you to reframe the approach instead of saying I feel really awful right now I can't do anything instead just shift that to I feel really awful right now but I want to go see my friends and I want to get out of bed today because that's going to make me better and so to move forward despite the pain there's different techniques that actually can help to reduce the pain acutely as well just breathing techniques things like that can help in reducing the severity of the attack and the duration of the attack um, but those different pieces together we think of as cognitive behavioral therapy there's very strong evidence that cognitive behavioral therapy is effective